Jerry here with Season 2, Episode 14 of Ask Jerry Tashwa. If you'd like to ask me a question, simply go to my website, Tashwa, T-A-C-H-O-I-R, dot com, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a tab that says Contacts. Just click on that, fill out the information, ask your question, and perhaps we'll do one of these videos for you. I've been getting a lot of redundant questions lately the last couple months. They seem to be just reoccurring interests of people that are very similar. And uh, so I thought we would revisit a question that came up, uh, actually it came up about five or six times in the last couple months, and it has to do with grips. I actually did this video uh, several years ago in one of my Tashwa tips, but I thought I would go ahead and replay it as part of this Ask Jerry series. Um, and this one comes from Lee in Hawaii. Aloha, Jerry. Thank you for the information you have provided in these informative videos. Being stranded on an island, Hawaii, yeah, I feel your pain. It is more difficult to get the information and study mallet instruments. Your videos have been very valuable. I'm fairly new to the world of keyboard mallet percussion. I started with a marimba and recently acquired a used vibraphone. I'm a bit confused on grips, more so on which grip to use and why. Could you please talk about the grip you use and how you came to the realization that that was the best one for you? Thanks again, Lee. And again, as I stated, I, I did this once before, but I'm going to go ahead and replay it as part of this series uh, seem, since there seems to be a lot of interest in specifically grips. And as a matter of fact, every clinic I think I do anywhere, the issue of grips always comes up. So it's something that we are definitely concerned about. And I hope this helps. Also, I ask you to please, if you're watching this on YouTube, Click the subscribe button. This way I'll be able to notify you when we have new videos that come out. Take care. Hope this helps. Thank you. One of the first questions that always pops up during my clinic presentations is, which grip do I use? I've kind of figured out a general rule that I apply to my students. And again, this is my opinion and may or may not represent what other players think. But the concept that I have is if you're going to primarily be a vibraphone player like myself who also plays marimba, then the grip of choice tends to be one of the various cross grips. However, if you're going to be primarily a marimba player who also plays the vibraphone, then perhaps one of the available uncrossed grips, otherwise known as marimba grips, would be available. And they basically look something like this, where the mallets actually don't cross. Now the advantages and disadvantages of each. With the cross grip, I have equal power, equal force at any mallet. In other words, I can play just as powerful on any mallet as I can with any other mallet which is very important on the vibraphone because I have to dampen. I have to be able to hit a note and use another mallet to dampen, which means I have to be sure that each mallet has equal power and also equal capability to do the dampening as necessary. When I go to the marimba with this grip, the big four mallet rolls, chord rolls that you hear so nice on a big marimba. What I have to do is really relax my hands to where the mallets are basically flopping around and independently allowing me to play those rolls. So that's the compromise. If you're playing one of the various marimba uncross grips, the advantages and disadvantages are obvious that on a marimba, yes, you can reproduce those rolls a little bit easier because being that they aren't actually touching each other, the mallets are not crossing, they all have uh, independence of each other. So when you're doing these big rolls, they naturally fall at different rates and hit at different times, thus producing a rolled chord sound that's very uh, pleasant to listen to and not really uh, rhythmically um, involved, but more just a nice, pleasant roll. The disadvantage with any of the uncrossed grips is that you have two strong mallets, and that's your inside mallets, simply because you're holding them with your thumb 
and your index finger, and you have a lot of force there. The other two mallets are being held usually by your smaller fingers, so meaning they don't have the strength. So you have two strong mallets and two weak mallets. So when you come over to vibes with this, you're constantly reminded of what am I playing? Am I playing a melody? I need it to be loud, so I have to use inside mallets. If I'm just playing chords, I can use all four mallets. If I need to dampen, I have to try to make compromises as to which mallet is really going to give me the force that I need to do the dampening. So each grip has its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I've seen a lot of people who play vibraphone uh, and have spent years and years developing a really nice uncrossed marimba grip. So they come over to the vibraphone and are studying with me and they say, Jerry, I, I want to sound like you. I want to do what you're doing. I encourage them. I mean, you spent so much time to develop a grip, which means you have to develop muscle tone, which means you have to develop calluses, which allow you to play your instrument and not get the blisters and not go into pain when you're doing aggressive things. So I, ad I advise them to just go ahead and take the grip that they're most comfortable with and see what they can do and adapt it to the instrument that they're playing. Yeah, there's going to be things that you can't do that I can do on the vibraphone, but at the same time, there's things that you can do on the marimba that I may have struggled with. Now, there are marimba players who play this grip. Kiko Abe is one of them. Virtuoso, world-renowned marimba player, and this is the grip that she uses, so obviously it's not all bad. Uh, there are vibes players who come to this and they play one of the uncrossed grips uh, and they seem to do equally as well. Of course, again, a lot of times they're probably making that subconscious uh, opinion in their mind as to which is the aggressive mallet, which is the one that I can dampen with or whatever. So there, there are things you have to deal with all the time. So that is one of the most crucial aspects on playing these instruments is finding a grip. Throughout the years, I have tried, actually very early on, to maintain both grips. I said, well, okay, if I'm going to play marimba, I'll use the uncrossed marimba-ish grip. Uh, when I come to vibes, I'll do this one and I'll play the vibes grip. Um, and to be honest with you, there's not enough time in a day to develop the muscle tone, and like I said before, the calluses, and just to put the time into learning two grips. So I really found out that I have to have a grip that works for me, that I'm comfortable with, and that can apply to both instruments. So that's my tip for today, and I hope it helps you in deciding which one works for you, and you can't get too discouraged on which grip you end up choosing, because it's basically a comfort thing. It's something that you want to feel comfortable with and confident that this is the grip that allows you to play musically on either instrument.